Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my fly tying bench. Join me as I show you some of my favorite still water fly patterns to help you catch rainbows just like this one. Jerry McBride's Bionic Worm is an excellent little fly. It just drives rainbow trout nuts. Here are the materials you'll need to tie this great little fly. So let's tie the bionic worm. I owe Jerry McBride, the originator of the Balanced Leech series of flies, credit for this fly as well. This is an excellent coronamid larva pattern that just drives rainbow trout nuts. I have caught fish on this in Manitoba, in British Columbia, in my home province of Alberta, and down in the States, in Idaho, and places like that. It's just a great little uh, coronamid larva pattern. In the vise, I've got a Mustad C49S Curve Scud Pupa Hook. I slid on a 764 hot orange bead. I'm going to attach the tying thread, which is red 8 odd or 70 denier tying thread. We'll just get that started, trim off the excess, and we're going to cover the hook shank all the way down into the bend, just past the point of the flat, the flattened down barb. If you, if you took your tying thread and went on about a 45 degree angle, that's about right. We'll just do that, and then right back up quick open turns right up to the back of the bead. For the tail, I said it was unorthodox, hot pink marabou. So we're just going to strip off a small clump, maybe 3 eighths to a half inch wide. I'm going to moisten my fingers, stroke the fibers together, and I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger just to stroke off and strip as much of the fluff or flu off the marabou so I can get down just to the stem itself. I'm trying to, I'm doing this by removing material so I can reduce bulk. I want to keep this fly as skinny as I can. So what we're going to try and do is make sure that the distance from here to here is just stripped fibers. So I'm just going to kind of pre-measure, eyeball, trim, Moisten my finger, it'll help hold everything together. Offer that up right behind the bead. Pull back a little bit. And then secure that all the way down the top of the shank, right into the bend, like I said, right back in a little further. If you want, you can put a wrap right underneath, and that'll help hold the tail up a little bit and we'll just pinch that to length, about the length of the shank. Just hold it like that. It's one of the few times I'll actually pinch marabou tails. And they're ready to go, the tail's tied in. Now, as we go back up the shank to maintain our slim profile agenda, I'm just going to hold that ribbing material right up, pull it to length, just so it looks like it'll tuck in right behind the bead. And then we're going to secure that along the near side of the shank all the way up. We can use our thumbnail. Again, we're just distributing materials around all sides of the hook shank as best we can to keep everything nice and slender. And for the body, we're going to use, in this case, Red's um, scud back. Trim that to a point. Now Jerry uses, he ties on a gold hook, his original flies and uses red V-rib, and that's just one of the other combinations. I just love how this scud back looks and how easy it is to work with and how easy it is to maintain a very slender profile because it's so stretchy. So we just get that tied in by the point, and you can see that I'm just going to give this a really good tug and secure that right down the shank. So once I'm confident of the materials tied in, I give it a really good stretch. And again, that's simply to reduce bulk. Once that's done, we'll put the body material into the material clip. And then since we're not using a gold hook, we'll put a gold underbody. In this case, gold holographic mylar. Secure that in place. Secure the, everything down and move the tying thread forward. I'm just going to take my bobbin, spin it counterclockwise. If you look from the top, that takes all the thread twist out. allows you to form nice flat wraps that are wide, they cover well, but they don't build up bulk. And now we're just going to take our 
gold holographic mylar and wind it forward to form the underbody in close touching turns. Trying to make sure we have no red thread wrap showing through. Just wind that forward. Right up to the back of the bead. Tie off. Two or three wraps is fine. And trim away the excess. And then we're going to come and wind our scud back body material forward. So we take a half a turn and then I'm really pulling on it now. And we're just going to wind that forward. Again, nice flat touching wraps. Trying to maintain as slender a profile as possible. All the way forward, up, once, twice, and in behind. And then we're just going to come in and trim. And I'll show you a trick here. Sometimes you can bang your bobbin, accidentally knock the thread off of your stretchy material. And because it was wrapped under such tension, it just unravels like a loaded spring. So you can put a couple of turns of a whip finish in there. You have locked off the tie-in. You can bang the bobbin all you want and you eliminate the risk of that material accidentally unraveling. So do this on scud backs such as this, stretch floss, any stretchy material just for a little peace of mind it's not going to unravel at the wrong time, not that anything ever unravels at the right time. And now we just got to wind our ribbing forward so we go open turns, forward, just get into a rhythm, nice open wraps, worry about anatomical correctness fish can count our body wraps or our ribbing segments rather we're kind of on the losing end we won't catch those fish so we'll just tie it off a couple on top one in behind pull and twist to break away the excess save scissors and then spin our bobbin again to flatten and build up a nice gradual slender taper right up to the rear of that orange bead. So make it gradual, don't build the taper up too steep or everything will tumble back and unravel. Once we're happy with the dimensions of our little thread thorax, we're just going to come in. A three turn whip finish should be ample because we're going to coat the body. Pull that tight, trim, and the tying portion of the hollow worm is done. And now all that's left is to put a body coating on. Lots to choose from out there. Today we're just going to use some brushable crazy glue. Time to trim some of those bristles, I think. Right up, you can coat the bead. Just keep it away from the marabou tail. And there you have the completed hollow worm. Again, very unorthodox colors. When Jerry first showed me this fly, I, I admittedly looked at it and went, wow, that's loud and obnoxious, but man, these colors down at depth, if you were to hit this with a UV light, you can see how these colors just light up and really trout see into the UV spectrum. Good contrast on that fly. Just an excellent fly. It just drives rainbow trout nuts. So that's the completed bionic worm. For more information on fly fishing, and in particular still water fly fishing, please visit my website, flycraftangling.com. Of course, you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching.